big thank you to Rockler for sponsoring this video and supporting what I do. So the finish on my bathroom vanity is a little bit worn out and I thought about just refinishing everything, but instead I think I wanna go ahead and make new drawer and door faces. I personally like the shaker style, um, so that's what I'm, I'm gonna be building this week. First I ripped off all of the doors and faces. The doors were held on by some simple screws and these faux faces were held on by staples. So I used the claw of my hammer to pry it off. So with these drawers, I try to knock the faces off, but they're glued in place, so that's a no-go. I could uh, run it through my bandsaw and cut them off, but I think I'm just gonna go through the effort and make new drawers. But first I started the very tedious task of sanding. Since I'm wanting to stain these cabinets, I needed to get it down to the bare wood. I started off with a block sander, but I very quickly moved to the random orbital sander. And I also used my oscillating tool with a sanding pad attachment to get into the nook and crannies. <laughs> my husband was awesome enough to help me out with this part. Then I was on to the shop to start making the new faces. I'm going to be making my rails and styles two inches. So I grabbed some one by three oak and cut it down to two inches at my table saw. Then I set up a stop block at the miter saw to cut everything to length. These doors are going to be held together by tongue and groove joints. So next I move back to the table saw and cut in a dado on one edge of every board. I'm going to be using quarter inch material for the inside panel, so I put in my quarter inch dado stack. I also put in two playing cards to act as additional spacers, just so it's slightly larger than a quarter inch. And then I started cutting in the dados. I kept things straight by grouping together the rails and styles of each door. And after all the dados were cut, I then moved on to making the tongs on all of the rail pieces. I did this by increasing my dado stack to half an inch because I wanted the tongues to be half an inch. And I used my miter gauge and a temporary fence to help me cut it in. These tongues need to fit inside the dado or the groove that I just cut. So I would always test fit it before moving on just to make sure that it was a nice fit. Okay, with everything cut, I started dry fitting the pieces together. I would put a frame together and then measure the inside distance, so then I could figure out how big to cut the panel. Once I had the measurement, I used my table saw to cut quarter inch plywood down to size. Since I went with oak for the rails and styles, I'm using oak plywood to match. Then it was on to applying the glue. Now, I only applied glue to the tongues of the rail pieces, so the inside panel is not actually glued into place. Once everything was glued together, I put it in clamps and set it aside to dry, after admiring it a little. <laughs> I just repeated the steps to assemble the other doors. I'm going to be spraying on stain for a finish, and I'm using an HVLP sprayer made by HomeRite. Something I really liked about this sprayer was the air nozzle attachment. I used this to spray off all the dust before applying the stain. Then I poured the stain into the container, switched the nozzle back to a sprayer, and then started spraying. I don't have an area set up for finishing, so I set up some cardboard in the corner of my shop. And it was awesome just how quickly I was able to apply this stain. I have no idea why I haven't been using a sprayer up to this point. I applied the stain to the front side, then let it sit for about five minutes and then wiped it off. I flipped the boards around and then repeated the process to the back. While those were drying, I started with making the drawers. I started by cutting all of the sides, fronts, and backs to size using the table saw and miter saw. Then I switched out my table saw blade for a dado stack and cut in a dado along the bottom of the side pieces and the front pieces. I used pocket holes to put it all together, making sure that the pocket holes for the front piece were pointing forward since it will be covered up by a faux face and the pocket holes in the back were pointing towards the back since nobody will ever see it. Then I cut to size and slipped in the bottom. And we are in the home stretch. Instead of buying new sliders, I'm reusing the ones from the old drawers. Okay, instead of making these two faux faces again, I bought some hardware to make them tip out drawers. Installing these is definitely a two-person job. 
and it certainly helps having a helping hand getting up from under the sink. For the drawer faces, I clamped it in place and then just screwed it in from the inside using two screws. So I am in love with this. I think that these shaker style doors really does a great job at updating the look of the vanity. And I went ahead and took out the majority of the gaps since I was remaking the faces anyways. I was aiming for a quarter of an inch. Um, the only place I ran into a problem was on these doors. I had a two inch face frame and I could only find one and a quarter inch overlay hinges. So that means that I am left with a three quarter inch reveal on both outside of these doors, which kind of throws off the look, but I was limited on the hardware available. But these faux faces are now functioning tip out drawers, which gives us a little bit more storage. I didn't like the bins that came with the, the hardware, so I'm just gonna end up making my own. And then these uh, drawers are just the same as they've always been. Overall, I think that the process was relatively quick and easy. So if you're needing to update your vanity and want to switch to shaker style doors, then check out wilkerdews.com. I do have more information in the tutorial on the overall process. So I hope that this was helpful to somebody, and I'll see you then next time I'm working on something.